everyone, this is Laura from Watch Laura So, and today we're going to talk about the five different ways that I use to try and save money during times when I may not have as much money available for um, my quilting or my sewing, and what are the five things that I turn to, to, to in order to either save money or to reduce the amount of money that I'm spending. And so I thought I would share that with you. And I don't know if this is something that you are thinking about, but if you are, join me and I will be talking next to the sewing machine today. <laughs> so anyway, let's get started. So one of the first things that I do is I will take a look at the fabric that I already have. And so whenever I'm making a table runner, a quilt, or even something that I'm sewing, like a, a fabric basket or something like that, I keep the scraps. And then when I have enough scraps, I take them and I start cutting them either into, you know, typical sizes like five by five uh, squares or 10 by 10 or... I, I'll do a strip either of two and a half or sometimes I do three and a half inch strips and I just try to put them together in uh, different drawers that I might have in a dresser that I store fabric in and so I will actually have an entire drawer for two and a half inch strips and I have a drawer for five inch squares and what I do then is I take those and I try to arrange them by color so that I will have all my blues together, all my grays together, browns, you know, that type of thing. And I try to arrange them from dark to light. And the other thing is like, for instance, if you have something like a gray, you may have a blue tone grays and put them together. And then you may have like kind of your green tone gray or your ash grays and you put them together. And so that it's kind of in the way that a colorway would be, for instance. And so that you start grouping them together in, in colors that would typically go together in a quilt in order to group them into good color groups. A lot of times I'll use either the color wheel and I'll look and see what will go together or another thing that I do sometimes is I take a favorite photograph and I will look at that picture. And if I really, really like that photograph, I, I want to look at the pictures in that photograph. For instance, if I'm at the beach and I have a, uh, if I'm at the beach and there are seagulls flying, a blue sky and sandy beach, then I'm going to be looking at those colors in that picture. I know that they go well together because I love that environment. So I might take those colors that I see and I'll group them together. And so I'll take all my two and a half inch strips, for instance, and I'll put the ones that look good together from that photograph. And usually when I, I, I when I gather enough of them, then I can actually think about making either a quilt or a table runner or a pillow or even a bag out of them. And so I will know that they tend to go well together. And so instead of just using the color wheel, a lot of times your favorite photographs will also lend themselves to uh, collecting uh, good colors that go together for future quilts and table runners. The other thing that I do is I, during times like this, when I am trying to reduce my costs and I don't want to buy a lot of new material or certainly not a lot of collections, I'm very, I'm kind of really choosy about what I end up getting because, um, you know, times are tough and I don't have a lot of disposable income for to buy fabric. So one thing that I do is I embrace the scrap quilt. And so there are so many patterns out there that are for scrap quilts that this is a great time to make a scrap quilt. And again, you know, things like following your colorways will really help you out in doing a scrap quilt. And scrap quilts can be a lot of fun and they feel good because 
Yet the other thing is you're kind of using your scraps and getting some more use out of them. And you're having fun making a quilt. So it's all good, good, good. So it's all good stuff. <laughs> so I like the scrap quilt. So that's number one is going through your fabric, seeing what you can use, trying to go through your scraps, see if there's any that any usable fabric from it, arrange them into different colors that would look good together in a quilt, and then to embrace a, a scrap quilt. Number two, the other thing that uh, a person needs a lot of time is a pattern. And there are places that you can find free patterns. And as much as I like to support and I like to buy patterns, uh, sometimes when times are tough and you just don't have a lot of money, there are places that ha offer some nice free patterns. And, you know, everything from the fabric uh, shops sometimes will have a free pattern out there and uh, even manufacturers of fabrics can have free patterns out there and those are always great and one thing that i try to do sometimes uh, artists will actually offer a free pattern and you know when times are tight i will use that free pattern but then when times are a little bit better, I try to go back and I try to make sure to buy something from that artist because I think that it was so generous of them to have a pattern that I could actually use. And I just want to support them for that. So as my, as my availability of funds change, I try to go and support them. In fact, I have a lot of patterns that I have bought because I used a free pattern, and I've never actually used the bought pattern, but I just wanted to support the artist because they did such an amazing job on the free pattern that I just wanted to support them. So that's something that I do, but there are a lot of free patterns out there. And uh, I think that it's a great way to support an artist too uh, sometimes you can support them by giving a great review or recommending them to other people. And there's a lot of ways of supporting that artist who is providing that free pattern to you. Number three is uh, looking at the, so now we have the fabric for the front, we have a pattern to use, and now we need to look at the backing. Uh, this is where I look at a lot of my scraps again. And sometimes I will have scraps in a larger piece. And I will go through and I'll see if I can put them together kind of as a block. Or I try to make some type of design for the back. And then I use that as a backing uh, for the quilt. So it, in essence, I have a two-sided quilt. <laughs> but usually for the backing, I make it pretty simple. And I make it so that it, if it doesn't center, like it, that it's easier to center on the back because I don't try to have too complicated designs and then try to quilt that. So I make sure the backing is a much simpler design. And sometimes I just do color blocks and it looks great and it works fa fabulous it uses up some of those larger scraps or those fabrics that you just are never going to use <laughs> and so you can use them up on a backing and it will work out great so that's one thing that i do another thing that it, i do and i have done but i don't do very often and that is to use a sheet uh from you know, like a, a 200 count or less sheet uh, from a sheet set. And usually I get the sheet set and I'll try to get like a queen or a king. That way I can use both the flat sheet and I can use the fitted sheet. And on the fitted sheet, I just cut off the elastic and then I try to use it as a backing. But I always try to make sure, at least for free motion quilting on the domestic machine, it really works better if it's 200 count or less. If it's like 400 count or higher, what I find is that the needle has a little bit harder time going through it and I can get a little bit more jerky uh, free motion quilting. So, you know, part of that depends on your machine, of course, but 
I find that 200 and about 200 count is the right one for uh, using a sheet for a backing. And they work fine. I mean, sometimes they can be a lot cheaper to do that. It kind of depends on what you're looking for. So that's one option. Another option is to shop. There are certain stores that do offer uh, lower cost fabrics and uh, they offer them in bulk. And so that's something else that you can look at if you know that you are going to make a lot of quilts that may have an off-white or a tan backing on them. You could do something like buy it in bulk and that can help save money. I will tell you and I will warn you that <laughs> I have actually bought a backing in, in bulk and I bought a bright white one. So while that was really brilliant at the time, the problem was that everything that I did that year really required having an off-white and that the white looked, it looked terrible. So I still have that bolt of, of wide backing because I don't find that I use it very often in the backings of quilts. And so, or table runners. I use a white a lot of times on my table runners that have a lot of white in them, but it usually has a design on them. So I don't usually have just plain white. And this is a solid white and it's just sitting and I'm just waiting to use it. So it's probably gonna be used in one of my scrap quilts because I have a lot of it and it's backing material rather than just, it's kind of a lower thread count. And so it, it wouldn't be that great on the front, but I might use it one day and you might see it real soon. Okay, and then ultimately trying to buy fabric on sale. And you know, I, I would look for sales. There, they are out there. Uh, there are fabric stores that are not, right now having sales. And so what I try to do when I do that is I try to buy in some basic colors that I might be using. A lot of times I know what colors I have bought. I don't try to veer off of that very much. And I try to try and buy colors that would look good with that. Number four is batting. So now we need some batting. And there, I buy batting in bulk. I do it because I do a lot of quilts every year and I do a, a lot of table runners uh, for my Etsy shop. So I do buy it in bulk. It, that works out really great if you have a batting that you truly, truly love and that you want to use all the time. So that's what I tend to do. I tend to buy it in bulk, but there's other things that I do too. And for my own quilts, there's times that I take quilt pieces that are left over from some of my quilts or table runners that are kind of in a rectangular shape. And I kind of put them together and then I zigzag across them so that I join them together. And you don't want to have it like overlapping. You just want to have them together and then zigzag across. And I do use that sometimes when I... I uh, when I don't really have or want to cut into my bolt of batting. Sometimes I just want a quick piece to do a, a, a something personal for myself. I don't do it, obviously, on customer uh, quilts or table runners. So, yeah, I just don't do that. Uh, I do only do it on my own. So that way I also know where it is on the quilting and... You know, I make sure that they're quilted down really well. Number five, quilting. <laughs> there are several options when you're quilting, and one of them is to uh, contact a, a long arm uh, quilter. I totally endorse that in that if that is something that you like to do, uh, try and talk to your long arm quilters. I'm sure that they also, they have costs and they have uh, requirements that they need. So they may or may not be able to help you with any pricing on that, but definitely talk to your long arm quilter and support them. Uh, that is really 
uh, fantastic. I don't use long arm quilters, uh, not because I don't want to, I, I would like to, but I've never really, for the amount of quilts and table runners that I make every year and that I like to finish, uh, I the only way that I can do it is to really free motion quilt. And I've talked about this before. It's just, I can't afford to send out to a long arm quilter. I wish I could. <laughs> There's a lot of days I'm like, oh, that would be so nice to just be done with that quilt and be able to just put the binding on and get it done. But I really don't have that much um, available funds to be able to do that. So that is why I do a live free motion quilting. Free motion quilting can be done on a domestic sewing machine. Uh, it can be done on a long arm as, as well, but a lot of times it's done on a domestic sewing machine and uh, it is something that is a, definitely an option. And I have plenty of videos on some of the ways that I approach free motion quilting. So if you want to look at that, um, feel free. It, the easiest way is to subscribe. You can look at my categories of my different videos and then you can choose that and you can see some of the videos of, on free motion quilting. And I just show what I do on my sewing machine. And if it's helpful to you, that's great. There are a lot of people out there who have videos on free motion quilting. So uh, definitely find one that you like and, uh, you know, go ahead and follow them and make sure that, you know, subscribe to their channel so that they can, um, you can watch their videos uh, when they post them. So feel free to ch subscribe to my channel if you are interested in my videos. That would be fantastic and I'd love that. You can take it to a long armor. You can do, do free motion quilting. You can, if you have a walking foot for your sewing machine, you can take a walking foot. And I have done this on numerous quilts, actually. And when I first started, I did not do free motion quilting. All I did was a walking foot. And I discovered that a walking foot could go straight across the, the quilt. And I could just do row after row after row. And so my first one that I did, I just followed the squares. I just did a basic patchwork and I just followed the squares around. And that turned out great. And I love that quilt today. Uh, another one that I did early on is I just did rows uh, all the way down so that it was a row lengthwise on the quilt. And I just did them, you know, every two inches and it turned out really nice and it looked great. Another one that I did, this one looked pretty neat too. I used a walking foot. I had a center design and from the center design, I just did spokes going out and it, like it was radiating outward. That turned out really awesome. So there are different ways that you can approach uh, using something like a walking foot in order to get your quilt quilted and be able to, you know, enjoy uh, quilting. Also, it helps get things done because I don't know about you, but well, right now I don't have a live quilt top. So I have one pillow top that's sitting that I'd like to go ahead and quilt up. But I really don't have a lot right now because I try to finish them pretty quick. Because if I don't, I found that they sit and they wait and they wait and they wait and they never get done. And so uh, I, and then I get a pile of them. I have to do them all at one time because I like to finish my quilts. That might be something that has helped me is to go ahead and use a walking foot and just finish that quilt. Because a lot of times it'll be something very enjoyable anyway. Like the one that radiates out is a very cool quilt. I like that quilt a lot. Another thing that you can do when you're looking at quilting is sometimes you can rent a long arm or a sit down uh, long arm, uh, a sit down machine where you can do free motion quilting or you can rent a long arm and either use their edge to edge or you, or you can do free motion quilting. So that's something that's available out there. And the last thing to do that you can do is hand quilting. And that is something that uh, I look at the quilt 
Oh, you can't see it. But the quilt behind me, you can see a little bit writing here, is was done by my grandmother. And she hand quilt, actually her sister hand quilted that uh, quilt. And I just think that that is so amazing. I am not a good hand quilt quilter. I can do it, but I am not a good one. Uh, my stitches don't get down small enough, but uh, that is something that can be done. The other thing that you can do, and this is, uh, this I have done, and it was actually a lot of fun, is I have actually taken a, a little bit larger needle, and instead of trying to get my stitches really super small, I've taken a stronger thread and I one that could be seen because I decided, you know what, I'm just going to make it contrasting <laughs> where everybody can see it. And I just went through with almost an embroidery type level of thread and just, you know, in and out, in and out. And it ended up looking really good. The only thing that you have to watch on that is if the stitches get too large, they can get caught on things. I learned that the hard way. But so you want to make it small enough that it doesn't get caught, but it is a little bit more freeing in being able to do the uh, hand quilting. I did that with a really, really large hoop and it worked out well. And I just happened to get that hoop from my mom. So I have it somewhere. I should do a video on that because it, it is one of the methods that you can use and it, actually moves pretty quick. Those are the five things that uh, I use to try and save money in 2022. I'm always trying to save money. <laughs> Having your own business, you try to save money every, every way you can, especially when it, it times are tough. So you know they're coming, you know there's going to be tough years, so you just try and save money where you can. Some of the other things that you can also look at and that I have I have actually started using in my personal quilts is that I am embracing solids. You know, they cost a lot less to just get a basic solid, but I have actually been embracing solids and trying to do some solid designs and it is really kind of fun. Uh, I've been playing around with a design that I'm working on myself and uh, I am using solids. So we will see how that goes. And I'll share that kind of as we're going along. So, but that's another thing that you can do is you can reduce costs by looking at the type of fabric that you're going to use. And uh, so using solids can be an extra way to kind of reduce costs on a quilt. And you might find, you know, maybe you like all turquoise and, and um, like sea glass kind of colors or something like that. And you just, you know, choose all solids and it will look really pretty. So those are some of the things that I do when I'm watching my pennies, which is most all the time. <laughs> so um, I am, I'm blessed to be able to do this a lot and be able to quilt and I just try to be kind of economical about it, especially in my business, uh, being able to tr try and provide some wonderful valued items for people and uh, things that they will appreciate and treasure throughout time. So that's what I try to do. I hope these money saving tips are helpful to you and that uh, you can use them this year in 2022 as all the prices seem to be going up so um we're all looking for places that we can save money so i hope that these are helpful to you so we will continue on i'm doing some of our free motion quilting designs i've got some fun ones coming up i have a whole one on like little bears <laughs> little bears and some fun ones and some books and some swimming stuff. And so I've got a lot coming up. I hope you uh, subscribe and, and, and uh, watch. And I will see you next time at the sewing machine. Bye-bye.